Hello guys, some people blame filament for being slow with bad performance, especially with bigger tables, with relationships in rows with 100 or more records. In this video, we will benchmark and test it out. So we will test it locally. We will also test the performance on Laravel Cloud, so remotely. We will also compare it with a table based on view inertia. And we will discuss the reasons why it is potentially slower. And also, I will talk what Dan was saying on the podcast about current tables in version 3 and what he's done for version 4 to make it better. So first, local testing. Here's our simple table with, by default, 10 rows and quite a few columns, around 10 or so. And I've opened Laravel debug bar and network on the right. So if I go on the dashboard and then go back to orders, it loads pretty quickly. In the network, we see 197 milliseconds, which is okay in my opinion. But the first experiment is to add more rows. So in addition to just columns, I will uncomment those two things. Pagination options only 100, and this will become the default option. And now if we refresh our page, see what happens. The time becomes 952 milliseconds, almost a second. Let's try again, go to dashboard and back to orders. What is the time? 8.29. So maybe something is cached, so a little bit faster. Now what about 200 rows? So let's edit those to 200 and refresh the page. It's even slower, but how slower? 1.67 seconds. So it's double the time. And what is the reason? Let's close this one and open debug bar with zoomed version. I thought it was database queries, but there are only seven queries with eager loading. So the queries, if you look at the time, they don't take much time at all, milliseconds. The actual reason is here, the number of views rendered. So you can see Blade components here rendered, and here you see the number 200 components, which means that every row is actually a Blade component. Not only that, every cell is actually a Blade component, but it's cached in a more performant way, so it's not in this table and not slowing down that much. Now let's make a few more experiments with columns. And I will prove to you that the problem is not in columns. Let's add one more column. So username, for example, let's show user email as well from the relationship. And let's try again. I went to the dashboard back and we go to orders and one more column. Did it change anything? Not really. 1.66 and the amount of views is 208. Another experiment, let's try to remove all the columns except one. For example, let's comment those out and even comment those sortable things. So we show only one column. What happens then? Go to the dashboard, back to orders, and what time do we have? Faster, 775. So the amount of column does play the role, but much less significant than the amount of rows. And Dan Herring, the creator of Filament, talked about that on the podcast about Filament 4 in December 2024. So you can listen to the full 58-minute episode, which starts at around 8th minute, the topic of the tables. But I decided to transcribe it for you in the form of article that you can actually read more conveniently. So on my Filament examples, here's the transcription with formatting and a bit more screenshots. So here are the words by Dan. We're using a lot of blade views to render the table. And here's the explanation. You can read it in full and I will link that in the description below. But basically three views per cell and at least four views per action cell, which means button or a link. So if we open this thing, the debug bar, the timeline, you will see not the SQL queries loading all the time, but view component, if we scroll down, down, way down. It's all about loading the views. And interestingly, the actual underlining reason, it's not Blade. It's the time for PHP to include and import the file. So it's about file system. That's why sometimes it's even slower, for example, on Windows, if you have Windows Defender scanning the files or other file system operation that makes the file include slower. And this is the speed on my local MacBook Pro server, which is pretty fast. So I thought what it could be on a remote server. So I tried 
Laravel Cloud. And I thought this is a good use case for using Laravel Cloud. You spin up the server with Postgres, it's almost free with Hibernate. So you don't pay that much for the compute. And you have the domain name something something which you don't care much about. And then after this experiment, I will probably take the server down and will not pay for that after this video. So for quick experimentations and benchmarks, Laravel Cloud could be an option. So now if I click the orders, what do we have here for 100 rows, the same table, 1.19 seconds. Locally, it was around 800 milliseconds. Let's try again, just to make sure. Yeah, it's above one second. So it's like 20 or 30% slower remotely. This is on the slowest server of Laravel Cloud, which is 256 megs of RAM. Now let's compare the speed to the view inertia table. This is a table with also 100 rows from our demo project from the course, which we published for view starter kit, Laravel 12 starter kit. So here's the code, Laravel controller, we paginate by 100 records, pass the task to the inertia view component and in that component in the index view we have v4 for the table table row v4 so typical Vue.js thing and even v4 inside of one of the cells it's a different data set but i want to show you how it works and why it is faster so if we go to dashboard again we open the network tab also i've installed laravel debug bar so you will see views one here for the dashboard now what about tasks we load that table and actually let's make a full refresh because it's spa what happens now so our tasks table loads in 165 milliseconds and it loads only one blade view with similar amount of queries so seven queries also pretty fast but only one view which is not blade view in this case it's Vue.js view but this is the thing only one thing to render and all the logic if we go here the response of that tasks is the HTML with all the JavaScript inside to work with the table. So there are some things for debug bar, for example. And if we scroll down to the very bottom of that JavaScript huge thing, this huge thing, by the way, is for debug bar. So debug bar itself may be the reason for some slower behavior. So let's actually disable it for now. And let's try to see the response app debug false and now have the tasks with smaller JavaScript. This is for Ziggy for the routing. And down below, after all that JavaScript, we have div ID app with data page. And if we copy paste the content of that, you can see the data from the table here in JSON. So timestamps, so name and other columns from the actual table. So it's all inside of one html with javascript and not loading view by view cell by cell in the table like filament does so that's why by definition simple tables are of course faster than filament that said with filament you have data tables so you can search you can click tab so much more functional with live wire under the hood so you're kind of paying the price of performance for functionality if i were to build similar table in view inertia it would be slower not that slow because it would still load the javascript inside probably and then it of course depends on the code that i write with filament this is the default behavior from the tool itself now the question is what can we do First, we can wait for Filament version 4, which is released later in 2025. There's no release date officially yet, but Dan will speak at Laravel Live UK in June 2025, presenting some of the things in V4, and I'm not sure whether it will be released by then or after that, we'll see. But in the same podcast that I mentioned in my transcript a bit below, there is a solution for V4, so Dan refactored that part to not render blade components unless it really has to. So Dan went against Laravel best practices and against parsing blade, which is more convenient in favor of doing things kind of manually under the hood without including separate files multiple times. So from his testing, now the tables are rendered about twice as fast, which is great news. So this is one thing we can do is wait for v4. And another thing we can do, and here's what I want to get back to this original comment about very slow tables. One of the replies to that comment was this, loading 200 records is likely not necessarily what your users actually want. 
So question yourself, do you really want that big and slow tables? Instead, maybe think about UX decisions like filtering, searching, and sorting for users right away with some default values. So think outside the box, limit the pagination options maybe, and just basically don't load huge tables in filament with 100 rows or more. Or if you do, then expect slower behavior because that's the reality, the current reality of Filament version 3. Of course, another reason could be your unoptimized database queries. So that's another topic for eloquent optimization in Laravel and Filament. But most of the times, big tables is about blade views. And this is what I was trying to explain in this video. What do you think? Do you have any other solutions to suggest? Or what do you do in your projects? to make tables faster, let's discuss in the comments below. That's it for this time and see you guys in other videos.